Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, chase race number six, second half of the chase for the Universal Orlando Cup Series as we head to the Lone Star State of Texas. Getting ready, getting set for the Farca 400. Let's get on down to your starting lineup. On the pole, we have Seth Cole for this event. Next to him, JT Bryant. Third, Zachary Fitzwater. Fourth, Jessica Sheldon. Fifth, Scott Roush. Sixth, Sam and Oskin. Seventh, Joshua Osborne. Eighth, Zach Flickinger. Ninth, Audrey Baranowskis, your previous race winner at Bristol Dirk, playing the top 10. Brian James, here's your starting lineup from 11th and 12th on back. And on the final row, we have Clint Spillman and Quentin Moore. Not a good qualifying up for the E19. They've been in the slump last couple of weeks, so they need some big redeeming factors. All in all. Speaking of which, Brett Pritchard took a big advantage in that chase battle right there. Even though Cole Deaver has been on the rebound game, still he has now jumped up into that battle for the championship thanks to that good chase run he had back at Bristol Dirt, being the top chaser, finished in second place. Only to Audrey Baranowskis there. Points battle coming into this are as follows. Points leader being Cole Deaver. Not really a surprise right there. Brian James, P2 in the standings, three points back. Then you got the Q man known as Quentin Moore. Him and James Ellison are tied for their respective positions that they are in. Drivers, start your engines. As there is the command. We're going to leave this at TV1 and uh, go to the Nun. 51 laps of action. Then you had Scott Roush, one point behind them. So I was trying to say before I got rudely interrupted. And then three points behind Scott Roush is Clint Spillman and Trent Dunham. By the way, he is a hometown hero for this race weekend. And then everyone else just right around the 5,040 mark and underneath. So we'll talk about the hometown heroes in a bit. Pace cars down pit road. It is showtime, ladies and gentlemen. Green flag is out, and we're underway here at Texas. We mentioned about Trent Dunn being the hometown here for this event. Can't forget about John R. in car 05. Last time that we'll ever get to say him being a hometown hero. One last effort to try to win at Texas. And those are the two drivers that are trying to represent, if you've seen in the qualifying efforts where they're at. There's Trent. Towards mid-packish around there. John Art, not too far behind in car 05. So far, for the most part, these drivers are going three wide, so that's uh, interesting to know. Oh, wow, that was weird. <laughs> My apologies, folks. Did not expect a total stop right there. But anyways, though, as you see, RJ Bishop currently in the 98 trying to work his way around Trent Dunham and Jeffrey Finn guy. Look at Flickinger right down the middle. What a move. Got around Oskin. Jeffrey Finn guy following the same as well. Now, the middle line is actually not bad of a line to use at Texas, but mainly you want to go to that... Low line, that is the preferred line. Except turn four, we've seen this in the Outback Xfinity Series, and Zach Flickinger showcasing that outside line coming off of turn four. You find a little bit of extra grip over in that turn, and you can get advantage right there. Speaking of Cole Deaver, getting put in the middle, and Zach Flickinger knows he needs some points. This is where in that championship battle comes around. This is where you got to go big or go home. And he knows with this championship rival, not too far ahead right there. Flickinger is just trying to get every point that he can to hunt down on the 9. He just at least needs to finish ahead of the 9, just so that way he at least can stay in contention when we head to Zen Joltis for the finale. Seth Cole and JT Bryan have been swapping for that lead there. And now Scott Roush said, all right, JT, you had your fun, and now it is over. I'm hopping to second place. What a season Scott Roush has had in the 60. A very rough start in the beginning. Been involved in the first five races in Rex and then turned it around with some consistent finishes. 
And then Roush pulled the magic rabbit out of the hat. One at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600. Now trying to win here at Texas tonight. Top two are chasers. Joshua Osborne, P3. Now, if we stay green flag racing, this will turn to a pit strategy race that will go on by. Zachary Fitzwater, P4. James Qualls, P5. Great runs for both of those drivers who's been just trying to find anything this season that really needs up in there. Qualls has had a couple of good runs, but just he hasn't been very consistent like he normally would be. Change hangover definitely has been affecting that 70 team. And you've got a Johan Outwood Motorsports there. Both of the cars are actually in the top five right now. And Scott Roush, what a move right there. He just easily took the lead from Seth Cole coming off of turn one. Pulled the slingshot. And don't look now, RJ Bishop, Zach Flickinger have joined the battle. And they have pulled away. From Cole Deaver in the 9. JT Bryant fell all the way back to 10th. Next chaser behind JT Bryant. Got to go all the way to the hometown hero of Trent Dunham. And a driver who is in desperation mode of trying to get a good run is Diego Yepes. This man has just had nothing in the chase run this season. Consistent the regular season. And the chase has not been so kind to him. And he's going to lose another uh, spot there. A regular position to Ramey Fisher. May lose spot to Kev Shear there. And... Look at Quentin Moore getting around James Ellison three wide with Alex Drayton in the 14. Whoa, Brett Pritchard in the grass. Caution is out for the first time tonight. Well, so much for a long green flag run. That's out the door. Zachary Fitzwater has jumped to P2. Qualls is going to get P3. Look at RJ Bishop going for P4 on Seth Cole coming to the line, and he will get it. Trouble on the front on the front straight and oh this is uh see the marks there that's not really good. Trouble for Cody Lamas and Nathan Hudson. Cody's car just absolutely battered and Nathan Hudson's got some rear end damage in that mobile one dodge. Looks like possible trouble for Brian James in the 94. Trying to see his right side of the car. Benjamin Miles with some damage. Zach Rogers down pit road as two is Jessica Shelton. Phil Parker with some left side damage. His teammate Connor Myers got damage. Someone ran the back of someone coming off of turn three and four. I have no idea who it was, but... Well, then. Caution as that was we're in lap 11 of 51. Scott Roush, currently your leader. So we're going to watch this battle off pit road. You can see right here is those guys that came off pit road earlier. One driver did not beat out the pace car. The others did. And Roush, first one off pit road. Look at RJ Bishop, second off. What a stop by the... 98 car, and Fitzwater right there. Or it looked like, yeah, that was Fitzwater. Great stop by the 7 there. And see JT Bryant having some struggles on pit road. Just can't get out. They were three wide almost exiting pit road. Now Bryant finally getting out. Slow pit stop for that FedEx Navy blue colors there. Scott Roush, though, out in front. Let's take a look at ourselves our first caution here at Texas. Well, here's a look at ourselves our first caution and just... I'll tell you, one driver got very lucky on that one was Keith Batts in the 39. He actually got clipped by Brett Pritch in the 54 coming off of turn four. And he gets away scot-free. Brett Pritchard, Cody Lom is just instant bystanders. Brian James in 94, he sees the mess that's happening. He's hitting the gas on the high line, and then he hits the brakes. He should have just stayed on the throttle, but wow, look at Phil Parker actually getting on at least one wheel there. Three wheels off the ground. Dylan Pozzi got a little piece right there. In the 31, a little bit of right side and some rear. Brian James, he's trying to avoid. He is literally on the brakes. You can see that Wegman's Toyota just full brake mode. And you can hardly see him through the smoke. And he actually is going to get away from this accident somehow, some way. As to does Dylan Pote, unbelievable. 
Wow, that car about came to a dead stop, and I have no idea how he made it through that mess. That is unbelievable. We are definitely going to onboard Brian James because, man, I can't believe how he made it through that mess. And he, he had a front row seat that. Onboard Brian James in the 94. Oops. He was on the brakes the whole time, and he actually bounced off the wall, but as far as the wreck, wow. He avoided that entire accident somehow, and he's going to get lucky right there. It's a little bounce on the wall, but now the next driver we got to keep an eye on for an onboard. I got to see if he actually made it through. That was Dylan Pozzi in the 31. Let's see if the Great Clip Chevrolet made it through that accident. Minus that little hit. On board, Dylan Posey. He had that little bounce on the right, but... Wow, I'm telling you, he must get a golden horseshoe or something. Dylan Posey, everyone. Caution's out. Let's take it back to the green. Pace cars give us the one lap to go. Out of the race, only Benjamin Miles in the 62. Rough time for him at Texas. Nathan Hudson, one lap down in 41st. He has just had a nightmare season, and I guarantee he's going to be ready for Xfinity with his own team pretty soon. So we'll see what will happen. 40 cars on the lead lap, 41 altogether. Go back to green. Scott Roush currently out in front. R.J. Bishop in P2 right now. Zach Flickinger, third. Cole Deaver, fourth. Zachary Fitzwater, fifth. John Art, sixth. Audrey Bernalski, seventh. James Qualls, eighth. Aaron Douglas, ninth. Completing the top ten. Seth Cole had a bit of a rough pit stop there, but... He hung on into that top 10, finding the rest of some of our chasers there. Quentin Moore, 14th. Trent Dunham, hometown hero, 22nd. Clint Spillman, 23rd. Diego Yepes, 24th. Sam and Oskin, 25th. James Ellison, 27th. Zach Rogers, 30th. Brian James, 31st. Green flag back underway. Dylan Pozzi, 37th. Brett Pritchard, 38th at the line. I guarantee you them dealing with Cody Lamas is not going to help, especially for Dylan Pozzi, who is just taking the big blow out of all that there and go back to green flag racing. So now they're about getting around Cody Lamas with the exception of Dylan Pozzi there. And a good chunk of drivers have gotten around Nathan Hudson. But, man, Kev Shearer drivers on the high line. Look at Diego Yepes and Trent Dunham. Look at them take full advantage. Oh, man, that hurt. Clint Spillman, James Ellison, and others. Woo-wee. That was close. You got to be careful. That's where you don't want to really wreck your car there. You just got to be very patient to get around that damaged lap car there. And Man, Dylan Pozzi finally breaking free from Cody Lamas. It looks like he didn't miss much from Nathan Hudson. As long as he can get around the eight car. And he will. Dylan Thoreau got held up there and... Man, throws stuck behind that eight car. So now that the two have gotten away, Zachary Fitzwater is now taking the lead. John Art now looking for P2, trying to get a win at his home track. Flickinger, though, trying to get a run on the outside to hang on for second. Bishop going to try to follow Finga, or, uh, Flickinger. excuse me. And Scott Roush said, all right, two for your mistakes. Look at Qualls trying to go through the middle. You know what I'm telling you? That's got to be a thing with these cup guys there. They're trying the middle. RJ's going to back out, and this is where I think Qualls is going to lose his spot because of what's going to happen in turn three. But then again, we can see the outside run in four, and that's what Qualls is going to do. Nice move by the 70. And Baranowskis lost a lot of momentum on that inside line coming off of turn four. And now she's going to hold on. Cole Deaver, not really a chase spot, but still regardless, jumping up into the top ten. Don't look now. Quentin Moore, he's had two bad races in a row. Last couple of weeks, Las Vegas and Bristol Dirt. Now he's trying to get back on that rebound game, trying to take full advantage. The same can be said for Seth Cole in the 07. Remember, despite that pull, that 07 just can't seem to get back up to the front of the field there when it really matters the most. Commons just got around Quentin Moore for position. But back up to the front we go as James Qualls going to look underneath Scott Roush. That's for fourth. And Qualls showing the, the youngins here how to use that inside line off four. Nice move by the champion. Now this is where Roush has got to be careful here because 
He knows that nine car is looming there, and he knows he has to finish ahead of that nine to at least try to battle for a championship this season. Allison Rain, I don't know what is that 66. She's uh, wanting to try to pass Cole Deaver, and I don't know why she is. I really don't know why. You're winner at ISM. Got to remember Rain. Not really battling for a championship here. She don't care. She wants to win a second race out of three there. Is that 66? And she's going to get Deaver, and she's going to get Scott Roush. Not a care given in the world. She says, I don't care about your championship battle. I'm going for another win. Now, Ramey and Fisher looking underneath RJ Bishop for position. Three wide with the nine. This is going to help Seth Cole in the 0 7. And Deaver's just lost a lot of momentum. He rode that high line right where all that dirty, dirty air is and the dirty uh, tire tracks are. Right where the marbles are in that high line near the wall. And man, that nine car lost some momentum. He had to get back on that track. And good move right there. And now Seth Cole going to dive it there. That's a big chase battle right there. And I'm telling you, folks, Seth Cole, who made it by the LCQ, who's dead last in the points with a horrific season. He's taking full advantage of that chase. He's trying to do what Michael Walton did. In seasons past, season four to be exact, five seasons ago, and try to get not only a win, but at least battle for a championship in some type of way. So far, he's been kind of up and down, but as they have approached Cody Lamas in the 48. Zach Flickinger has taken the lead, just keeping an eye on some of that chase battle that's there. Ooh, Seth Cole gave a shot to Cody Lamas. I have no idea how they didn't wreck, but what a save. By that hot tamales ice Chevrolet right there. That was close. Now they've also approached Nathan Hudson. And oh man, John Art. That man cannot catch a break. Diego Yepes taking full advantage. Quentin Moore. James Ellison all getting around. Ooh, don't you do it. Oh, Hudson's going to block Quentin Moore. And it will allow John Art to get by. Moore's just trying to shove that eight car out of the way. And, man, it's just a train behind the eight. And now Moore says, thank you. Get out of the way. Quentin Moore. Zach Rogers is now joined in on this battle. Trent Dunham is stuck on the high line thanks to that 48. And now just a train just absolutely just flew by both the 48 and the eight car. Now you see Fitzwater, Trent Dunham. Oh, no. Trent is just in a very precarious spot. Is that Sega Chevrolet? He's got to deal with two damage cars on the high line. Let's just find a way to get around. Look at Oskin, the 63, flying right by. Brett Pritchard, Clint Spillman, Dylan Pozzi. Man, I know the 48's slow, but the 8's even slower. My word, the 48 passed him like nothing. Wow, and Hudson about blocked Phil Parker. Sam and Oskin, Brett Pritchard have now joined in on this chase battle. Quentin Moore now stuck on the high line. Joshua Osborne getting around. Sky Commons trying to battle for that position. JT Bryant trying to take advantage as well. Zach Rogers trying to go two for one on Ellison and Moore. Ellison, I'm not dealing with that. It's the caution's out for the second time. Flickinger out in front. Troubles for Phil Parker in the 15, it looks like. And Flickinger leading the field down. Trouble on turn one, it looks like there, with all the smoke and skid marks there. Possibly maybe a solo incident there. Because I know Myers far back. Oh, Trent Dunham in the one. Oh, no. He's got right side damage. And I hope it did not involve him and Phil Parker. Because I have a feeling it may have. Parker already down pit road. It's the 15. And Zach Flickinger going to lead the field down again on pit stops. Everyone coming down. Not one driver making a risk to stay out there. Now, the cup race we had at Bristol Dirt, we had one caution that took play. And the Xfinity race was caution-free. So, give me a seeing see how with the two-caution race there with pit stops, what's going to really change?
Eyes will be on that 96. Looks like gas and go for him and RJ Bishop. No tires needed. Seth Cole with a great pit stop. I think he got third from James Qualls. Oskin just got shoved into a stall. Ooh, Ellison ran to Bryant. Ellison ran into Bryant. Oh, and Sheldon, another driver, just got involved on pit road. I think that was Brian James. It was. Oh, my. No. Brian James, who was up there in the points. That's going to help Cole Deaver a bit. A sigh of relief, but... Oh, man. What the heck even happened there? Ellison with front end damage. You see in that Stouffer Chevrolet and some right side damage. We'll look at the caution and then we'll look at the pit road incident very shortly. Zach Flickinger out in front. Let's go take a look at ourselves our set caution tonight here at Texas. Well, this definitely, I saw coming a mile away. Lap car, Cody Lamas is going to hold up Trent Dunham enough. And, you know, I noticed that one car was having a lot of difficulty trying to get around Cody Lamas, and I don't know what happened, but Fitzwater tried to get around Dunham, accidentally clipped him, goes into Phil Parker, and unfortunately the 15 and the 1 are also going to take some damage into the wall there. And Trent Dunham, you got a feel for him right there. It's not the way he envisioned his home race there. And... I don't know how much that's really going to affect Dunham's car, but uh, that should be interesting regardless. Let's take a look at the pit road incidents there. All right, we're looking with James Ellison in car 03 here. Now, we're just going to see the part where he gets involved in this mess, and then we're going to look at Brian James within the same clip. Now, I am trying to figure out what exactly happened with James Ellison. Now, the, the driver to keep an eye on was JT Bryant, the 22. You can see he's making service right there. Sam and Oskin, Joshua Osborne got very lucky after that. So they made a small bit of contact. Oh, I think Fitzwater was trying to get into a stall. And Ellison was trying not to pit. That's a, Oh, yeah, that's exactly the case. Because uh, I think Fitzwater... Yeah, this stall's right there. and Oh, he just hit James Ellison and ran into JT Bryan. Oh, man. Oh, the drunk Aussie strikes again. Wow. Zach Rogers trying to hit the brakes to avoid running into Kev Shear. Nice miss by the Monster Energy Ultra Paradise Dodge there. Now, Brian James, you can see in the in the same frame there, trying to figure out what exactly happened. Shell's trying to get in her stall, and she can't because of the 22. Oh, Brian wasn't even paying attention. Oh, oh no. Oh, that is a... Big F right there in the chat. Oh, man, that was just an unfortunate moment there. Brian thought he was going to get through, tried to hit the brakes, and, oh, that is a big blow right there for that 94 team there. Definitely not what he needed. Oh, that is bad. Caution's out for the second time today. Let's take you back to the green. Pace guard's giving us one lap to go. Out of the race, definitely Brian James out of that one. What a big blow for him there who is up there with Cole Deaver in the points, three points back, and he's only going to get one chase point. What a big blow, especially that's not going to help because Cole Deaver is actually doing really good right now in this race. So now, Brian's going to have to watch that race now and hope Cole Deaver doesn't get a good run tonight. Otherwise, he'll be in some deep trouble for the rest of this chase. Top 10 run now, Zach Flickinger, Seth Cole, RJ Bishop, James Qualls, Allison Rain. Ramian Fisher, Audrey Analysis, Diego Yepes, Aaron Douglas, and Kyle Matthews complete top 10. Scott Roush, P11. Other chases to mention, Cole Deaver, 15th. Green flag back underway. James Ellison, 18th. Zach Rogers, 20th. Quint Moore, 21st, as they're going to try to get around Ellison. Look at Bryant. What in the world's the 22 doing? Brett Pritchard was 26th at the line. Dylan Pote was 30th. Sam and Oskin, 32nd. Trent Dunham in 30. Sixth. That sucks for Ellison, though. Oh, man. And you can hear the uh, the anger in the background on that one. And oh, man, that 
He's not going to be happy about that one, and I, I wouldn't blame him. Oh, we got trouble on turn one. Trouble for Phil Parker again and Nathan Hudson. No caution, though. And Hudson's day looks like it's over for him. Meanwhile, Zach Flickinger continuing to lead. Seth Cole trying to hang on for P2. Here comes RJ Bishop on the 98. You can see the skid marks in the smoke. No yellow lights are going off, though. Seth is going to hang on for a second of the time being. I'll tell you what, though. Great day for uh, Full Throttle Motorsports there. Both their drivers when the restart happened were the top 10. Fisher, though, however, has been dropping like a rock. Same can be said for James Qualls. Meanwhile, Scott Roush in the 60. Him and his teammate Jeffrey Finguy working together, and I don't blame Finguy for doing this. He's drafted his teammate to get up there. Giving him the good old shove to get up there and go. Oh, wow, Qualls got way squirrely off the corner there and had to let off on the throttle. Three wide now, and that's going to help Finguy, not Roush. I don't know why he made that move, though. And now Fisher trying to get everything. Look at Osborne about to shove the 60 out of the way. And Roush went a run coming off of turn one and two. Diego Yepes in that 59. He knows he has to beat that nine for anything. Flickinger, though, enjoying the, the drive on tonight. RJ Bishop, though, looking for second. He is now the biggest driver with a winless streak trying to be snapped. Baranowskis won over at Bristol Dirt. Snapping her big winless streak. Kev Shear won last season at Open Roads. Scott Roush broke his winless streak. And RJ's next on the list, man. He needs this win bad. Tell you what, though, ever since those drivers I mentioned before got those wins, that 98 car is starting to make some presence there. Well, with the exception of ISM. He's been having a really good car, but just, just falls a little bit short trying to get that win. Oh, and look out. They split the eight down the middle. That's scary enough. And Jeffrey Finguy is just going to get held up as we're nearing 10 to go. Oh, man, these drivers are now going to get held up. And Oh, look at Osborne. He put the 60 on the high line to get blocked by the 8. And Finguy still getting held up. Finguy's like, man, what do I got to do to get around him? And Hudson threw a block on him. I don't know why these drivers are who are off the pace are throwing these blocks, but definitely not a popular move in the garage area there. And now Zach Rogers saying thank you very much. Ooh, man, Hudson not playing favoritism tonight. Just making sure these drivers are going to be okay, especially for our chasers in the rear of the field. Quentin Moore, man. Holy cow, that 89 car has disintegrated this race. Car's been nowhere ever since that last pit stop to the front of the field. He's been falling backwards. Glenn Spillman just got around him. And now add an insult to injury. Throw contact with the eight. They're going to keep it together. Dylan Poteet, Sam and Oskin. Look at Cole Deaver all the way in 31st. Pritchard 32nd. And the two rivals, teammates, getting around the eight, but Deaver just got around more. Now Pritchard getting around the 89 as well. Leaders are going to approach Phil Parker. Baranowskis looking for two in a row for the 46 team. Someone uh, predicted that in the bingo card. Holy cow, I guess they're going to play the lottery here. Reigns looking for her second win. And correct me if I'm wrong, that's, this would be her second win in three races, that 66 car. They'll be approaching Phil Parker for sure, and they'll also approach Cody Lamas in the 48. Troubles for JT Bryant. No caution. I think he got dumped. Yeah, he got dumped. I don't know by who, but... Wow. And Moore and Dunham have just flat out fallen apart. Pritchard is getting around Cold Eaver. Oh, yeah, that car got dumped down there. Dunham having struggles with Ellison and Ferranti about wrecked the 0 3. Is 
Zach Flickinger ever since he lost that lead. He's nearly outside of the top 10. Diego Yepes has gotten around the 96. That's a great sight for the 59 team. They may get their big rebound of the race right here. Meanwhile, Seth Cole not giving up on this battle here as they have caught Cody Lamas. Matthews got held up a little bit, got around the 48. RJ and Seth now trying to get around him. We'll do so. Osborne will get around as well. I told you those lap cars are going to be coming. And they won't be playing. Qualls will get by. Now they've approached Phil Parker. Everyone down low. Not even one car went on that high line. And Baranowski is just hoping that these lap cars, she can get around them with no problems at all whatsoever. Next possible car they're going to approach is Nathan Hudson, which Brian just flew right by around. Man, that eight car is just a human pick. Now you see James Qualls in the 70. Approaching Parker. We'll get by. John Ark the same. Great run for the hometown hero for that 0-5 team. Definitely wish it could be the same for Trent Dunham. Allison Rain trying to do what she can to pick up her second win in three races. Or will it be Baranowskis winning two in a row as we hit two laps to go at the line? Time is ticking for these drivers. Matthews looking for a third win of the year. Bishop trying to break a winless streak. Seth Cole trying to get a big win for the Chasers. Right now, he is the top chaser, but I guarantee you, how hard is Seth going to push that 0-7 car to get that win? They will approach Hudson, I can guarantee you that, but they will not approach Bryant. White flag coming at the line for the Delta Airlines Chevrolet for Full Throttle Motorsports. White flag, one lap to go. Here they come to Nathan Hudson in the 8. What's Baranowski going to do? She's going to get held up. Trying to be patient, but Rain's coming. A move has to be made now. Oh, she got it low in time. Seth Cole looking for third. Gonna get it. Matthew's gonna have one chance to try to get this win. But unfortunately, not gonna be enough. Audra Baranowskis, two in a row for the 46. She does it. Wow. That's the second driver to go two in a row in a season. Actually, that's the third driver to do it. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Audra Baranowskis, folks, has won two in a row, winning at Bristol Dirt and now Texas. Wow. Oh, my word. First, Kyle Matthews at Pukekohe in Dubai. Then, Brett Pritchard. At Daytona night in Homestead. And now, you got Audra Baranowskis with Bristol Dirt in Texas. Unbelievable. I don't believe it. <laughs> I know I wish I could have had the race uh, recorded for that one. The other one there that we had uh, uh, at the time for the Bristol Dirt race. But, wow, I'm in utter shock. Baranowskis just pulled off two in a row. Seth Cole, top chaser. He'll come away P3 overall. Kyle Matthews got the podium in second. How about Johanna Atwood? Fourth and fifth for Osborne and Qualls. Great runs all together. John Art in sixth. Allison Rain seventh. RJ Bishop in eighth. Ramey Fisher ninth. So great day for full throttle as well to get a win and a ninth place finish. And Diego Yepes, second highest out of all the chasers, will come away P10. Here's a look at your full finishing results. Find the rest of our chases there. Scott Roush, Zach Flickinger finished 11th and 12th respectively. Then you got, looking through here, Dylan Pote, 20th. Clint Spillman, 23rd. Sam and Oskin, 24th. Zach Rogers, 27th. Had a bit of a rough night altogether. Avoid the axes, but just couldn't seem to get around the lap cars too. That's what really got him. Cole Deaver took the big hit, but he did beat out Brett Pritchard, so that did help him out. He'll come away 29th. Pritchard, Pritchard aforementioned 30th. Quinn Moore, 32nd. No idea what happened to the 89 car. That car disintegrated as two to Trent Dunham. Last car to finish the lead lap at 34th. And then James Ellison finished a lap down in 38th. And then the big blow right there, Brian James only going to get one chase point. So Brian James with one, 
James Ellison with two. Trent Dunham with three. Quinn Moore with four. Brad Pritchard with five. Cole Deaver's only going to get six chase points. Seth Cole definitely gained eight points in that battle right there. And, you know, Deaver was ahead of Seth by at least nearly 20 points. So that, that really helped him out there. At least a 12-point difference nearly. Or uh, I should say uh, a 13-point difference. Excuse me. And that was a big help for that 0-7 team. Another one they really needed that good run was Diego Yepes. And that really has helped him out for sure. Sam and Oskin, although he did finish ahead of that 9 car, not really a whole lot though. So time is ticking for him if he wants to still be in that battle. But his chase success this season has not been pleasant. So Seth Cole, Zach Flickinger, they got their hopes alive again. And even a little bit for Diego Yepes, but Sam and Oskin, not good for him. Thank you guys for watching. If you like, be sure to give a like, thumb, comment your thoughts, subscribe, put the Intercell, hit the subscribe button down below. Folks, you've been watching production of the Intercell, where racing is living again. Congratulations one last time for Andres Baranowskis for winning the Farka 400. Until then, this is your boy DeYoung signing off. We will see you guys for chase race number seven when we head to Pensacola the last time. We will go to Florida. That should be fun how it is. Second to last super speedway of the chase. Until then, this is your boy DeYoung signing off. Points in the video, like always. Till then, goodbye, everybody.